Hi everyone, my name is Philip. Today I'm going to give you a brief introduction on how to stay healthy at the piano. Um, a lot of pianists do get injured from playing and I'm just going to give you a few basic principles, a couple of things to keep in mind that's going to reduce the risk of getting injured. Injuries are caused by stressful movement. Uh, it turns out that some ways of moving your hands and arms while playing causes unnecessary stress on your tendons, muscles and other soft tissue. Uh, so important to know, I think, is what type of movement causes that extra unnecessary stress and um, how do we replace those movements with something that is more healthy and will reduce your risk of getting injured. <clears throat> movements in piano playing aren't that different from other movements that you do in your everyday life. Um, in fact, they're exactly the same. And the difference can be that um, the amount of repetition uh, when you play piano is uh, pretty huge. Um, you repeat the same movements millions of times over the years, while in your everyday life, let's say, you um, go to the kitchen and grab a milk package. Maybe you do that a few times a day. And even if you do it completely wrong, and uh, causes terrible amounts of stress on your muscles and tendons, um, that's obviously not going to injure you because um, you also need some amount of repetition. Number one, co-contraction. Now that sounds really complicated. What it actually means, and it's really simple, is that um, you shouldn't use muscles that are working in opposite directions at the same time. Okay, So in order for um, the movement to be stress-free, you should only be working in one direction at the same time. One example, and this is really common, one example of co-contraction is the active curling of the fingers while playing. So note that I say active curling. Um, because the fingers do have a natural curve, you know, when you relax your hand and you observe that it has sort of a, a natural curve, curve uh, that you should maintain. Um, but as soon as you do an active curl, you end up um, uh, contracting these muscles on the lower part of the forearm. And then what happens when you raise the fingers, you're at the same time using muscles on the upper part of the forearm. So what you end up doing is having muscles both here and here pulling against each other at the same time. And uh, you can actually try this at home <laughs> uh, right now. If you don't do anything with your fingers, you just keep the natural curve and you try to move them like this. It feels very light, very free and very fast. But as soon as you do the active curling and try the same, you can feel that extra stress, that extra uh, discomfort. The fingers are just a little bit slower, it's a little bit more awkward. Okay, so just simply avoid that. Keep the natural curve of your fingers and you'll be fine. Number two, awkward positions. Awkward or extreme positions are stressful to the tendons when they move back and forth over the joints. For example, when you play with a low or high wrist or twist the wrist sideways, you also end up twisting your tendons. And that makes finger movement more difficult um, and more uncomfortable. And it also makes you weaker. Uh, you actually have to use more force to get the same result. So what you want to be doing is keeping the wrist in a straight line with the forearm and never move far away from that position. You can move it a little bit up and down, um, tiny bit sideways, um, but uh, yeah, so try to avoid uh, any awkward positions. Static muscular activity. There are two forms of muscular activity. One is dynamic the other one is static. 
the one you want to be using is the dynamic one. Um, what it means is that the muscle changes its length during using force. Um, that helps the blood flow go through the muscle and um, in the static one the muscle remains the same length and, and that prevents blood flow making your muscles easily tired and that could potentially lead to some kind of injury. The more force we use, the more stress we put on our muscles and tendons. Um, good news is that you don't need a lot of force when you play the piano because the keys are really light to push down, about 50 cramps. Um, especially uh, when you take full use of the um, weight of the forearm, uh, which is a lot heavier than 50 grams, um, piano playing essentially feels like nothing. However, there are three very common reasons why pianists use too much effort. Number one is the isolation of fingers. If you try to push down one key with only the finger, uh, that's going to feel quite heavy. And um, rather what you should do is connect that finger with the forearm and move them together as one unit. Then you get uh, the full use of the forearm weight. And um, yeah, piano playing is going to feel like, uh, like nothing. It's not going to be heavy at all. Um, number two is not taking full advantage of the bone structure. So you want to use your bones as much as you can rather than using uh, muscular effort. So that's going to reduce the strain on your uh, muscles and tendons. Number three is a misunderstanding of um, how the mechanics of the piano works. And I thought I would make a separate video on that. So uh, I'll see you in the next video and I'll talk more about that. To sum it up, number one, be aware of co-contraction. Don't use opposing muscles at the same time. Number two, avoid awkward positions. Number three, avoid static muscular activity. Number four, don't use too much force. If you like this video and you want to learn more in the future, please subscribe to this channel. See you soon again.